इन सिस्ट मैनेजमेंट इन पोस्ट मीनोपॉजल वुमेन ग्रीन टॉप गाइडलाइन नंबर थर्टी फोर जुलाई टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन इज़ द टॉपिक ऑफ अवर डिस्कशन टूडे फर्स्ट वी विल टॉक अबाउट डायग्नोसिस एंड सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ ओवेरियन सिस्ट इन पोस्ट मीनोपॉजल वुमेन हाउ आर ओवेरियन सिस्ट डायग्नोस्ड इन पोस्ट मीनोपॉजल वुमेन एंड वट इनिशियल इन्वेस्टिगेशन शुड बी परफॉर्म्ड क्लिनिशियन शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ द डिफरेंट प्रजेंटेशंस एंड सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ ओवेरियन सिस्ट इन पोस्ट मीनोपॉजल वुमेन In postmenopausal women presenting with acute abdominal pain the diagnosis of ovarian cyst accident should be considered for example torsion rupture and hemorrhage it is recommended that ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women should be initially assessed by measuring serum cancer antigen 125 level and transvaginal ultrasound scan what is the role of history and clinical examination in postmenopausal women with ovarian cysts A thorough medical history should be taken from the woman with specific attention to risk factors and symptoms suggestive of ovarian malignancy and a family history of ovarian bowel or breast cancer. Where family history is significant, referral to regional cancer geneticist services should be considered. Appropriate tests should be carried out in any postmenopausal woman who has developed symptoms within the last 12 months that suggest irritable bowel syndrome particularly in women over 50 years of age or those with a significant family history of ovarian bowel or breast cancer. A full physical examination of the woman is essential and should include body mass index, abdominal examination to detect ascites and characterize any palpable mass and vaginal examination. What blood test should be performed in postmenopausal women with ovarian cysts? CA125 should be the only serum tumor markers used for primary evaluation as it allows the risk of malignancy index of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women to be calculated. CA125 levels should not be used in isolation to determine if the cyst is malignant. While a very high value of CA125 may assist in reaching the diagnosis, a normal value does not exclude ovarian cancer due to non-specific nature of the test. Other tumor markers: there is currently not ev- uh, enough evidence to support the routine clinical use of other tumor markers such as human epididymis protein 4 HE4, carcinoembryonic antigen CEA, CDX2. cancer antigen 72-4, cancer antigen 99, alpha fetoprotein. What imaging should be employed in the assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women? What is the role of ultrasound scanning in categorizing the cysts? A transvaginal pelvic ultrasound is the single most effective way of evaluating ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. A transabdominal ultrasound should not be used in isolation. It should be used to provide supplementary information to transvaginal ultrasound particularly when an ovarian cyst is large or beyond the field of view of transvaginal ultrasound. On transvaginal uh, scanning the morphological description and subjective assessment of ultrasound features should be clearly documented to allow calculation of risk of malignancy Transvaginal ultrasound scans should be performed using multi frequency probes by trained clinician with expertise in gynecological imaging What is the role of Doppler and three dimensional ultrasound studies Color flow Doppler studies are not essential for routine initial assessment of ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women. Spectral and pulse Doppler indices should not be used routinely, which include resistive index, pulsatility index, peak systolic velocity, time average velocity to differentiate benign from the malignant ovarian cyst as their use has not been associated with significant improvement in diagnostic accuracy or morphologic assessment. by the ultrasound scan three dimensional ultrasound morphologic assessment does not appear to improve the diagnosis of complex ovarian cysts and its routine use is not recommended in the assessment of postmenopausal ovarian cysts what is the role of ct scan mri and other cross sectional imaging ct mri and positron emission tomography that is pet scans are not recommended for the initial assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women ct scan should not be used routinely as a primary imaging tool for the initial assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women because of its low sensitivity its limited assessment of ovarian internal morphology and its use of ionizing radiations
If from the clinical picture ultrasonographic findings of the tumor markers, malignant disease is suspected, a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis should be arranged with onward referral to gynecological oncology multidisciplinary team. MRI should not be used routinely as a primary imaging tool for the initial assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. MRI should be used as a second line imaging modality for the characterization of indeterminate ovarian cysts when ultrasound is inconclusive. PET CT scan. Current data do not support the routine use of PET CT scanning in the initial assessment of postmenopausal ovarian cysts. Data suggest there is no clear advantage over transvaginal ultrasonography. Initial uh, assessment and estimation of risk of malignancy. What is RMI and which RMI should be used? The RMI-1 is the most utilized, widely available and validated effective triaging system for women with suspected ovarian cancer. Although uh, RMI-1 score with a threshold of 200 that is sensitivity of 78% and specificity of 87% is recommended to predict the likelihood of ovarian cancer and to plan the further management. Some centers utilize an equally acceptable threshold of 250 with a lower sensitivity of 70% but with a higher specificity of 90%. Now, what is risk of malignancy index or RMI? RMI is a reliable tool in differentiating benign from malignant adnexal mass. How to calculate RMI-1? The RMI-1 combines three pre-surgical features. It is a product of uh, serum CA-125 levels in uh, international unit per ml, the menopausal status and ultrasound score. Okay, so RMI is equal to U multiplied by M multiplied by CA-125. The ultrasound result is score uh, one point for each of these characteristics, multilocular cysts, solid areas, metastasis, ascites, and bilateral lesions. So these are the characteristics and U is equal to 0 for ultrasound score of 0, U is equal to 1 for ultrasound score of 1, and U is equal to 3 for ultrasound score of 2 to 5. The menopausal status is scored as 1 is equal to premenopausal, 3 is equal to postmenopausal. So, this guideline is directed at postmenopausal women and therefore all will be allocated the same score of 3 for menopausal status. The serum C125 is measured in international unit per ml and can vary between uh, 0 and hundreds or even thousands of units. CD of the abdomen and pelvis should be performed for all postmenopausal women with ovarian cysts who have RMI1 score of greater than or equal to 200 with onward referral to gynecological oncology multidisciplinary team. What is the effect of age on risk of malignancy? The risk of ovarian malignancy increases by threefold after the age of 50. Now here we have percentage risk of developing ovarian malignancy, references from GTG that is based upon RMI score. Women with RMI of less than 25 have low risk of developing ovarian cancer that is less than 3%. Women with RMI of 25 to 250 have moderate risk of developing ovarian cancer that is 20%. Women with RMI of more than 250 have high risk of developing ovarian cancer which is about 75%. Now, what other scoring systems are available and when should they be used? Other scoring systems are described. Over one risk of malignancy algorithm require the specific assays which make sure, uh, which make routine use impractical. Okay, the international IOTA tumor analysis classification, that is IOTA classification, which is based on specific ultrasound expertise has comparable sensitivity and specificity to RMI and forms an alternative to those experienced in this technique. Now, how do you manage ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women? Do all postmenopausal women with ovarian cysts require the surgical evaluation and is there a role of conservative management? Is symptomatic simple unilocular unilateral ovarian cysts less than 5 cm in diameter have low risk of malignancy. In the presence of the normal CA125 levels, these cysts can be managed conservatively with a repeat evaluation in 4-6 to six months. It is reasonable to discharge these women from follow-up after one year if the cysts remain unchanged or reduce in size with the normal CA125, taking into consideration women wishes and surgical fitnesses. 
if a woman is symptomatic further surgical evaluation is necessary a woman with suspicious or persistent complex adnex and mass needs surgical evaluation now what is the role of aspiration of ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women aspiration is not recommended for the management of ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women except for the purposes of symptoms control in a woman with advanced malignancy who are unfit to undergo surgery or further intervention could postmenopausal ovarian cyst be managed by laparoscopy women with rmi of less than 200 that is low risk of malignancy are suitable for laparoscopic management laparoscopic management of ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women should be undertaken by surgeon with suitable expertise laparoscopic management of ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women should comprise the bilateral salpingo ophorectomy rather than cystectomy women Undergoing laparoscopic salping ovarectomy should be counseled preoperatively that a full staging laparotomy will be required if the evidence of malignancy is revealed. Where possible, the surgical specimen should be removed without intraperitoneal spillage in laparoscopic retrieval bag via umbilical port. This results in less postoperative pain and quicker retrieval time than using a lateral port of the same size. Where possible, the surgical specimen should be removed without intraperitoneal spillage in a laparoscopic retrieval bag via the umbilical port, as it results in less postoperative pain and quicker retrieval time. Transvaginal extraction of the specimen is also ex acceptable if the surgeon has available expertise. Then, when should laparotomy be undertaken? All the ovarian cysts that are suspicious of malignancy in a postmenopausal woman, as indicated by RMI 1 greater than or equal to 200, CT finding, clinical assessment, or finding at laparoscopy require full laparotomy and staging procedure. So, this table is quite helpful in the management of patients with RMI score of more than 200. If malignancy is revealed during laparoscopy or uh, from the subsequent histology, it is recommended that women be referred to cancer center for further management. Where should postmenopausal women with ovarian cyst be managed? The appropriate location for the management should reflect the structure of cancer care in UK. Who should manage ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women? While the general gynecologist might uh, manage women with a low risk of malignancy that is RMI1 of less than 200 in general uh, gynecology or the cancer unit, women who are at high risk should be managed in cancer center by trained gynecological oncologist unless uh, a multidisciplinary team review is not supportive of high probability of ovarian malignancy. So here we have algorithm for the management of ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women. So when a postmenopausal ovarian cyst, that is cyst lesion of one centimeter of so one centimeter or more is there, in that case, my year C125, transvaginal plus minus transabdominal resource scan and calculate RMI1. If RMI1 is less than 200, that is low risk of malignancy, we check the features of the cyst. When the cysts, cysts are fulfilling all of these criteria like asymptomatic simple cyst of less than 5 cm unilocular or unilateral, in that case, um, we will go in a separate line of management. But on the other hand, if we have cysts with any of these uh, features like symptomatic non-simple features, and having a size of more than 5 cm in multilocular and bilateral, then we categorize that patient in higher level category and manage in different way. When the RMI score is of equal to or more than 200, there is increased risk of malignancy. In that case, we do CT scan of abdomen and pelvis and uh, we do referral to gynecological oncology MDT review. So in patients with RMI of less than 200 and uh, with a simple asymptomatic and less than 5 cm unilocular and unilateral cysts, we consider the conservative management. And in the patients with RMI score of less than 200 with symptomatic, non-simple and more than 5 cm multilocular and bilateral cyst, we consider surgery that is salpingo which is UAE bilateral.
So in the first group of patient in whom we planned the conservative management, we repeat assessment in four to six months time. Uh, when we do CA125, TVS plus minus TAS and we check whether the cyst resolves or not. If, it's, if it resolves, then discharge the patient. If it is persistent, then repeat assessment in four to six months and do individualized plan. And if there are changes in features, then consider intervention. In a group of patients with RMI score of more than 200, uh, when we do a CT scan abdomen and pelvis, we do referral to gynecological oncologist. We do the MDT review. If there is high likelihood of ovarian malignancy, we do laparotomy full staging procedure by trained gynecological oncologist. And if in MDT review there is low risk of ovarian malignancy, we do uh, the laparotomy and Along with that, perform the pelvic clearance TH plus BSO plus mentectomy plus peritoneal cytology by suitably trained gynecological oncologist. So, I have briefly explained the whole summary of green top guideline about the management of ovarian cyst in postmenopausal women. Subscribe on Ops and Gyne and follow the Facebook page of On Ops and Gyne. Allah Hafiz.